What is up, God Gamers? We are back with another video about DFT set nine. So yesterday I uploaded a video where I ranked all of the past sets. I do this at the end of every set where I compare my personal opinion, my personal enjoyment of TFT sets, and that's how I ranked them. I gave my thoughts about set nine, and I had a lot of people talk about how negative I was on the set. So I thought today I would have a response to that, which is, this video, uh, this video where I will talk a little bit more about the positives as well as the negatives on the set and uh, just kind of uh, give my uh, opinion about it again. And uh, maybe you will agree with that opinion. So about being negative about things, because I think a lot of people, I read a few comments that were saying stuff like, how can you be so negative and also like love this game and play it all the time? So I am of the opinion that if you love something, if you truly love something, you should be honest with it. And if I'm being honest with TFT, it has a lot of problems or a lot of things that I don't like. It has a lot of things that I do like and that's why I love the game. I love the community. I love the game. I love playing it. I love the devs. Uh, but if you truly love something, criticism is a very important part of growth. Now you should give them their flowers when they deserve them. And I always try to do that even when I'm reviewing patch notes and I think the changes are complete dog shit and will almost certainly be, be patched and should never have gone through. I will. At the same time, in those same videos, give flowers to the devs for positive changes they are making to the game. And I think we truly have the best devs on the planet. And TFT is the best live service game that exists in the world right now. It is not even close. The following things we'll be talking about in this video are going to be things that I think are generally true, but also a lot of it still is personal opinion. TFT is a complicated game, and I think my opinion is valuable and valid. Even if you don't agree with it, I've been playing the game since set one. I've played the game at the very highest level. I've played in official Riot tournaments on the North American server. I've qualified for those things, and I have thousands of games played on TFT. So I feel like even if you don't agree with my opinion, it is valuable to the devs and to the community because I am someone who has been a part of it the entire time and has been grinding. Uh, so with that out of the way, let's get into this video about the positives and negatives of TFT Set 9. Bro. <laughs> I just got my Terran field to fall. <laughs> the game is, we're not even playing TFT. Like we're actually not even playing TFT. Uh, apologies about that part. I just I was editing the video and I just couldn't help but headbang to that part. So, but with that out of the way, let's get back to the video. Let's start out with the positives. And the first thing we'll be talking about is what I think is the most important part of this set for replayability, and that is portals. Portals have not felt too oppressive, but they also feel like they add an extra layer of fun and like difference and replayability to each game of TFT that I really, really, really like. And it actually does change the gameplay, not too crazily, but it does change the gameplay enough to where you feel like it's a new game each time you play. I also like the element of that it's kind of like a social element at the beginning of the game that everybody votes. You know, you can <laughs> type at people like, hey, don't stand on still water, you idiot. You know, like there is some fun, like, you know, maybe some toxic stuff in there, but it's fun, you know, like anything that adds uh, more communication or more um, interaction with the other players in the game, I think makes TFT a lot more fun. And along with portals comes the removal of the first carousel, which I think was one of the best changes ever made to the game. You guys all know the difference between if you start the game with a bow or you start the game with a cloak. Like the game is so much easier if you start the game with the bow usually, right? Um, and you'll just see people standing in front of the bows, especially in this set, how important bow is as an item component for most of the builds. So just the removal of that has been amazing. And along with what's gonna come in next set is the more item flexibility. They are reworking the equity item system. So I think the devs have been moving in a great direction with items. Items have not felt that great this set, if I'm being real. Uh, but the removal of the first carousel made it feel like a lot more of a fair playing field in the early game. Because a lot of times you'll just spawn near the bow. Um, internet connection can have a lot to do whether you get the first item on carousel. And it's just really annoying to have to play from that game state. If you like are always getting the cloak, you're always losing first carousel. It's a weird gameplay mechanic that I think doesn't actually um, embody the spirit of what makes a good TFT play. And next up we have legendary units. Now I know a lot of people don't like the legendary units because of the legendary patches, but I think those patches were more a problem with, you know, they over buffed Ari on a patch and then a soul exists. I think it's more of a legend problem and less of a actual legendary problem. 
I think the legends were our legendary units were in a pretty good spot a lot of the set at least from their design perspective I think a lot of units are plug and play like Scion, Senna, Heimerdinger and they have their use cases in specific spots I think I think Scion always goes on your board but like Heimerdinger you need to have a lot of gold you need to know if you need to uh put you know you need to know if you need shred thanks for the follow on on Twitch by the way you guys see that notification Hey, come follow me on Twitch. Follow me right now. <laughs> uh, but anyways, so I think uh, a lot of the legendary units were in a pretty good spot. They provided good utility for your team. They didn't feel too oppressive, except for those few patches where they were oppressive. Right, but those were just some overbuffs and I think was more of an ace hole problem. I think legends, legendary units were in a pretty good spot for a lot of the set, at least from a design perspective. And lastly, we're gonna talk about uh, some quality of life changes. I'm just going to talk about the final component anvil, which was a late addition to this set. They added it in the previous sets and then they took it away, but then they are making it a permanent feature of all of TFT sets because it is just good for the game. So the final component anvil is your last item you get every game is always a component anvil so that you don't get stuck in a situation where like, I don't know, your last item drop, you're, you're sitting on like a bow and then you get dropped like, I don't know, like a chain and you can't use that. Like let's say you can't make Titans for your team. Like it just doesn't work. Or you get like a ZZ rock portal at the end of the game. And you're just like, what the hell, man? And then like, I have a bow and I get dropped a belt and this this jackass over here has a bow and he gets dropped a rod when he needed his rage blade. Like what the hell? Um, so adding like where you can always get an item that you want at the end of the game. I think that feels really nice, especially in this set where items like Rage Raid, like Last Whisperer, um, there's like some items that feel mandatory in a lot of builds. So being able to get them at the end of stage four, rather than having to like sack the entire game to prioritize it and like, Maybe like you get unlucky on carousels, you spawn on the wrong side. At least you can still get your item at the end of the game. And I think that's great. There's a lot of other small quality of life changes that I honestly just can't remember. I've tried watching some gameplay before I filmed this video. I watched one of my own VODs trying to find all the small quality of life changes, but I really just can't remember them right now. But I do want to give the devs their flowers. They, I remember a lot. There were a lot of small quality of life changes that went into this set and things that we'll be taking into the future that I think is awesome. Lastly, I do wanna talk about Hero Augments. I know I said that was the last thing, but Hero Augments was, I think, a nice quality of life change as well. Uh, I think Hero Augments were the single worst set mechanic probably ever, other than Shadow Items maybe. Um, but with these bad mechanics, and this is what I always talk about with TFT, and this is why TFT is an amazing game and has amazing devs, is because when they add a bad mechanic into the game, they figure out ways to reintroduce it to the game because a bad mechanic doesn't start out as a bad idea. Like the actual core idea of the mechanic isn't bad. It just doesn't function well as a full on set mechanic. Like set mechanics are, are, are so like impactful to the game. And so something like Hero Augments was not good as a set mechanic, but it was good as a small feature of the game. Like it allows you to play certain comps like carry Cassidy or Gal I don't think Galio ever really took off but like you know if the hero augments are a little bit stronger on some of the other ones oh Warwick you know Ravenous Hunter so it adds this like extra comp that you can play that you wouldn't have been able to play without those augments existing I think hero augments were in a great spot in this set um, and are a great addition to the game I'd be happy to see them return in the future now onto the negatives and first up we got to talk about balance balance this set and maybe this is some recency bias dude balance this set has felt really 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 bad uh i talked about this in my other video but like there's a thing in tft and maybe i've just been playing for too long but i i, I don't think this is what's happening so in tft whenever a patch notes get gets dropped i always say i'm one of the best predictors of meta i am really good at predicting meta but <laughs> i mean the devs made it so easy this time around usually whenever i read patch notes and i'm predicting meta i can usually predict what's going to be strong sometimes i get things wrong but i have like a 90 percent success rate of knowing exactly what to play what will be strong i don't know everything but i know the majority of what the core gameplay experience will be for the following patch this set however i know what they're b patching <laughs> like I read the patch notes and I go, oh, okay, that's getting be patched. Oh, okay, that's getting be patched. Oh, okay, that's getting be patched. Well, this is gonna be broken for a couple days. I guess TFT is gonna suck for a few days. Um, like, it's 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 really crazy. Uh, I think balance this set has been really 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 bad. And I'm not gonna lie, the devs have felt a little bit out of touch with some of the uh, balance thrashing they've done. I think again, we have the best devs in the world, and they try to be in touch as much as they can. I know they have jobs and like that sort of thing, but like, man, like. There were a lot of like over buffs, over nerfs. There was a lot of situations where they would buff like an entire tree of builds, like the entire AP tree. 
and then they would nerf the entire AD tree at the same time, and they somehow don't see how that's going to thrash the meta, and then vice versa. Um, you know, they buff Zeri when she's already the best AD carry, um, and nerf Aphelio and slightly nerf Aphelios' build, um, and then like I, it's just like it's just like really strange like decisions that don't make any sense to me. Uh, and I think balance was the biggest detractor from this set overall. And along with balance, we have to talk about legends. Legends, I think, are a cool idea and maybe can be a permanent fixture of TFT. I think they really need to work on them a little bit more and really think about their design choices. And this is what I will always say about the TFT devs. And this is what I was saying about earlier about like shadow items and that sort of thing. And in hero augments is they really swing for the fences for things that are at a core level, a good idea. Like it's a good idea to allow some type of like personalization into TFT. TFT again is a game that feels very non-personalized other than like cosmetics. And so like adding a gameplay feature that makes it feel like you have a little bit more decision power around like what your play style is going to be. I think those are at its core level, a good idea. Now the implementation has just not been great. Uh, guys, we know at earlier early parts of the set where the set actually felt pretty decent, uh, but TF was like broken, right? Um, and then they they didn't know how to balance them, so they just had basically removed them from the game. I mean, they didn't actually, but they basically removed TF from the game. And we've had the patches like overbuffing Draven and Ezreal, like the Ezreal patch was not fun, right? Uh, if you didn't play Ezreal, you were significantly behind. If the glass industries were offered and you weren't playing Ezreal, good luck in Wii Sports, man. Like it just doesn't work. Um, and it just, just I don't need to even say anymore. I think right now we have a pretty decent ASOL patch, right? Uh, I think right now we have some decent legend diversity and we're getting into a better spot. And next set, if le assuming legends return, which I think they will, legends might end up being a permanent fixture. I think they really could get them in a good spot where it is a healthy part of TFT's ecosystem and TFT's game. Uh, but right now uh, in this set has not felt great uh, despite it getting better, but it has been getting better throughout the entire set. Let's talk about some traits. And this is where I think this is a lot of personal opinion, uh, but some of this is uh, things that I've heard Mort Dog say as well. And that is traits. I don't think the traits were very good this set. I think things like Piltover never got into a great spot. I don't think Piltover ever actually lived out that fantasy of a pet class, like pass and like abomination, that sort of thing. It's just like in high UO, this might just be a high UO perspective, but in high UO, like Piltover has just felt like a big nuisance in the game. Uh, it's never really felt like a true econ trait. You just get offered it at 2-1 and then like you win the game for free. Uh, if you're a competent player and you know how to play the game, you win the game for free. I don't know how it is at lower you was, but I feel like people never really got to live out the fantasy of like making this big T-Rex and this T-Rex carrying you. It just feels like, I, I don't know if I'm articulating exactly the way it feels, but it, it has not felt the same way as like things like Cultist and things like um, Mech and things like A-Bomb. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong about this. Maybe this is just a personal opinion on Piltover, but I feel like Piltover has been a huge problem this set and never lived out the fantasy of a pet class. The other pet class I don't think was very good and is returning in the new set, but maybe it could be better with uh, some different stuff going on with different things going around with it in the new set. But I think Void was a little bit of a failure. I think it Void personally has never really felt that fun to me. It feels like a trait that I play early game because it's really strong. I get the extra thousand health on my board pretty much. Uh, feels pretty strong. Uh, I play Rift Herald because I have to. And then Baron sometimes is really strong. Baron sometimes is not. I think Baron is kind of cool, but it's like so conditional to get online, which I think makes it more cool. Probably that's what they're going for. But I don't know. It's never felt like as cool as things like Cultists and stuff like that in the past. But that could just be a pure personal opinion of mine. Traits like Yordles, I feel like it was a huge failure. Yordles was like trying to cash in on like uh, Moonlights of the past where you make the four star unit, you know, also trying to like uh, mix in like uh, Yordle variations of the past, like you gain attack speed and they added those augments where you get, you can have Yordles spawn, you get the Yordle portals and that sort of thing. Um, but I, I don't know, Yordles always felt like not a real thing. It was like you just played like one of the carries of the Yordle comp, like. Uh, Tristana or uh, a Kled and Timo like never really took off. They like, had their spots sometimes, but like you either put you played those comps and like you just put in Yordle to get the four star. You didn't you weren't actually playing Yordles. Like you just put in Yordle to get the four star. And this is uh, very true. I've heard Mort Dog talk about this. He said uh, when he was at LCS, he was talking to Avali May. I think he was at LCS. He was talking to Avali May, uh, who's a content creator. She's worked around the LCS for a long time. She doesn't really do LCS anymore, but um, she said. She really wants to play Yordles because they're cute, because they're cute and she likes them, which is a big part of TFT. You know, I always talk about, I what I enjoy about TFT is a lot of the balance and stuff like that, all the all the sweaty nerd stuff. But a lot of a lot of TFT for me is like, do I like playing the units? 
Like, that's why I liked set four so much. I just liked playing Ash. I liked playing Jin. I liked playing Janna. I liked playing Talon. I liked playing Morgana. I liked playing Ribbon. I liked playing Cassiopeia. I liked playing Set. I liked playing Yone. Like, I really liked the units. Um, and that actually matters a lot to me. And I think that matters to a lot of other people. And that, and that was what Avali said, too. She said, I really like Yordles because they're cute. But you made Yordles not playable in this set. Like, I can't just play Yordles every game if I want to. Um, there's no, like, trade... Like, yeah, Yordles is such a weird conditional comp. So I think Yordles was a big failure, and I think that's a big part of why they're removing it. Another trait that I think is a big failure is Deadeye. I think Deadeye... Um I, I think I think it's a big problem that they're removing it from the next set. I think it's a big problem when one of your premier carries doesn't even need their trait. Like, you can forego Deadeye on Aphelios. Like, if you can fit in Deadeye, you want to play it, right? Because it, it buffs your Aphelios. But, like, you can completely forego playing Deadeye for the majority of the set. Like, it's just not good. The vertical is terrible. Um, like, some, like you have to have two emblems to play the vertical, and it's still, like... <laughs> wouldn't you just rather not be playing the six dead eyes like wouldn't you just rather be playing like a legendary unit um so i think that was a big problem and maybe i'm missing some other traits that i don't think worked out super well and maybe i'm not giving the devs enough credits on some good traits i think demosky was kind of cool and that sort of thing but overall i the, the traits did, there were a lot of failures with the traits and none of them felt super exciting to me but maybe that's just some personal opinion there last up we're going to talk about verticals and i think this is mostly a personal opinion this is just how i personally enjoy the game and i think it's how a lot of people enjoy the game playing at high elo um what are verticals if you don't know what verticals are it's when you stack a single trait for example if you're playing sharimas and you play seven sharimas you're playing sharima vertical and now the opposite of that would be a horizontal comp where you're playing three Shurima and like a bunch of other stuff. That is an example of a horizontal comp. Now, horizontal comps definitely exist in the game and have existed in the game for sure. Um, and a lot of people like playing verticals, but you may hear in high UO, a lot of people will say, I'm not even playing the game. Have you ever heard someone say that? I'm not even playing the game. I don't like playing Earth because I don't even play the game when I play Earth. And what that really means is, is when your early game traits tell you what to play the rest of the game, like so clearly. For example, if you get a Sharima emblem at the beginning of the game or you're playing Pisidium Library, like a lot of this set has felt like, now the, the, it's very different now. I think the set is mostly uh, balanced around horizontal comps, not perfectly, but it's like a lot of horizontal comps are very, 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 very viable right now. But a lot of the traits that I think are cool, like Sharima, have most of this set, other than that strategist patch that we had, most of this set, it's really felt like those comps are conditional to play based on if you can play the vertical. If you have the emblem or if you have the augment based around that trait, you might say that's normal. Maybe it is, but that is unfun to me. When I start the game right now, like for example, Earth is a very good legend. Uh, when I start the game with an emblem or I start the game with a two-star unit and uh, items to play a certain thing, and then I know what I'm playing the rest of the game. I don't have to make any more decisions. I do have to make more decisions, but they don't matter as much as the very first decision. I made in the game and I felt like a lot of builds this set have felt viable at the vertical like Sharima, like Ionia, like Storks and le less so it felt viable on the horizontal. Now there are good horizontal builds like Zeri had a good, a lot of good horizontal builds. Aphelios has a lot of good horizontal builds but a lot of this set when I wanted to play other traits, it really felt it was viable when I played the vertical. Shadow Isles is another one. You don't really feel how good Shadow Isles is unless you play the vertical. Now they did buff two Shadow Isles to address that right now. And honestly, this is a big part of uh, base sets. A lot of base sets, think about set five. Set five had this problem much more extreme. This, this problem was much more extreme in set five um, where you had a two star Leona, you're playing redeems. If you have a two star Vayne, uh, you're going first on some patches, uh, <laughs> but uh, you're playing Forgotten's, right? Um, and, and then when they went into the 0.5 set, the 5.5 set, they completely fixed that problem and the game was a lot more fun. So I have high hopes that this will be addressed going into the next set. And it has been slowly being addressed throughout the set. Um, there are more, uh, horizontal comps slowly becoming more viable. They're not as viable as they should be, but I think like Azir can be viable at three Sharima now, like in very specific situations. Uh, but I think this has been, uh, working out a little bit. Lastly, because I forgot to talk about this with the balance uh, section of this game, I just want to say that uh, this is the most balanced patch of the set. This is the most balanced patch of the set. And this is why I always talk about whenever I read comments and people say like, hey, I'm Diamond and I think you can play a lot of these comps or hey, I'm whatever rank and I think I can play a lot of these comps. Uh, 
and I, this sounds like elitist and gatekeeping and i don't want it to sound this way but the game is just so fundamentally different once you're like past 100 op master or 200 op master it kind of depends on what point it is in the set but if you're playing in grandmaster elo you're getting grandmaster players in your lobby or people who are in master who are making that making that shift you're playing around that elo the game is just so much fundamentally different uh than if you're playing below that elo no flame. Uh, the game is just so different. Uh, you are punished for things that you have never been punished before. And anyone who's ever tried to make that climb from master to grandmaster knows that that is the biggest wall of skill in all of TFT. That is when you start to actually get punished for things. And you actually, you actually feel when the meta is oppressive. And this is what I wanted to show here because this is the most balanced part of the entire set is right now, maybe actually the first patch, honestly, but first patch I think was more of a consequence if we didn't know what we were doing. But the set is the most balanced it's ever been right now. And these are these are the stats from yesterday, the mid-set finale from North America. Um, these are the turbo sweats. These are people who are trying to play the best comps, trying to win every single game, get every inch they can. And look at the comp variability. 22 of Felios counts yesterday. And the day before this was the same thing. It was like the same distribution. Um, and I'm sure today's distribution is going to be the same as well. Uh, 22 uh, Ephelios games, nine Sorks, uh, Sork Flex. Uh, but that is that is a conditional build based off of Emblem. Um, six Challenger, nine plays. Sharima, eight plays. Uh, and then look, just look just look at it as well. The most played comp has the highest average plays. And this comp was B patched, by the way. Uh, this was B patch nerfed. Um, but it's just you can see that you can see you can see what I'm talking about. Like this is the most balanced part of the set and it still looks like this is 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 what my main issue is with balance but anyways guys that is pretty much it for the video i'm just kind of going on now um but hey what are what did you like about this set what did you hate about this set do you disagree with my opinion now i am i an idiot uh i might be uh but that is it i appreciate you guys watch my stream please please watch my stream uh and and uh we will play together on the pbe server next week if you'd like so come watch my stream i play with viewers nobody watches my twitch stream guys maybe i need to start streaming on youtube maybe i will maybe i will maybe i will but for now i'm still streaming on twitch so uh anyways i appreciate you guys and i'll see you on the next one